Hi, Assalamualaikum. Sirmi Salim with you. Today's class is regarding accessory sex organs and menstrual cycle. Last class we discussed with OBG part 1 regarding female reproductive system. So we'll be continuing with accessory sex organ which is the breast and menstrual cycle. So we'll go to the class. See, the accessory sex reproductive organ of the female is the breast or mammary gland. It extends from the second rib to the sixth rib. It extends from the second rib to the sixth rib. So, it lies over the mid-clavicular line. Okay. Then, it will be over the pectoral chest muscle. And the part of the breast which has a blackish or brownish discoloration is called the areola and it covers 2.5 centimeter the projection of the breast is called the nipple and the milk production is done by which hormone most commonly asked question by prolactin and the milk release is done by which hormone oxytocin okay see we will see some of the terms here first the term telarc what do you mean by telarc onset of female breast development is called a telarc what is pubarc appearance of sexual hair is called pubarc what is menarc onset of menstruation or the first period is called menarc what is adrenarc adrenarc is onset of androgen dependent body changes okay now you will see to the menstrual cycle see menstrual cycle is otherwise called a funeral of ovum okay so what do you mean by menstrual cycle discharge of blood along with other materials including unfertilized ovum through the genital tract okay so it is discharge of the blood along with other materials including unfertilized ovum through the genital tract and it happens in 21 to 45 day cycle we can tell it as an average of 28 day cycle so this is the discharge of blood along with the other materials including unfertilized ovum through the genital tract and uh, it happens in the average of 28 day cycle okay and the first menses or the first periods that happens in the puberty is called menarch and the cessation or stop of periods is called menopause okay now the menstrual cycle i know it is very difficult to understand i make it easy as much as possible so listen throughout the class see the menstrual cycle or the menstrual phase happens in ovary as well as uterus okay you can see here i make it ovarian event and uterine event see when something happens in the ovary the same time it happens something other thing happening in the uterus also right if the ovary is making a follicle to be mature in the ovary the same time the uterus is preparing to receive the ovum or the egg okay so the phases are divided into two according to the events okay so we will classify first the menstrual cycle into two events the ovarian event and the uterine event so we will see one by one see the ovarian event is classified into follicular phase and the luteal phase okay the ovarian event is classified into follicular phase and luteal phase the same time uterine event is happening also so the uterine event is classified into proliferatory phase and secretory phase why i put this arrow see this means when the follicular phase happens in the ovary the same time proliferatory phase happens in the uterus get the point when the luteal phase happens in the ovary same time secretory phase happens in the uterus okay so the follicular phase takes place from zero day or the first day of the menses to the 14th day same time proliferatory phase takes place in the uterus then 14th day exactly what happens ovulation or the release of mature ovum or oocyte see then the 15th day takes place from the 15th day to the 28th day as we said before the average of menstrual cycle 
what happens luteal phase takes place in the ovary and secretory phase takes place in the uterus now you get the point we will see see in this diagram it start from a woman getting menses okay so the first day of menses what happens see you can see here follicular phase takes place in the ovary okay follicular takes place in the ovary the same time what happens see you can see here proliferatory phase also takes place in the uterus then in the 14th day what happened the mature ovum is released from the graafian follicle that is called ovulation okay then luteal phase takes place in the ovary same time secretory phase takes place in the uterus okay it will be detailed to discuss in next slides see as we tell before when we take the female reproductive system as a whole see we will see the ovary as a cross sectional view here okay see the ovary that is taken as cross sectional view in the ovary for a human there are a number of more huge number of follicles among these follicles one follicle is getting matured and releasing egg right see for that we need four hormones that is responsible for menstruation see we will see in the another graph so we will see the cross sectional view of the ovum as i said earlier there are a number of follicles in the ovum among that one of them is getting matured with the help of hormones see we will see here one ovum that is called primary form follicle or primordial follicle is transformed to the secondary follicle then it is getting matured it is called the graafian follicle then it is releasing the ovum that is called the ovulation then it is getting transformation that we will be dealt in next cycle okay next slide when we take a single this single follicle or a single ovum you can see the picture like this so the follicle consists of the oocyte okay and two cells mainly which are the granulosa cells and the theca cells so now you get the point so what happens in the puberty as we tell the first menses right so what happens here means hypothalamo pituitary ovarian axis get generated okay hypothalamo pituitary ovarian axis get generated what it do it will be releasing gnrh that is called gonadotropic releasing hormone see this gnrh what it do it will help in the release of fsh and lh hormone from the anterior pituitary okay so the fsh and the lh follicle stimulating hormone and the luteinizing hormone is released from the anterior pituitary so what they do what they do means the fsh will help as the name itself follicle stimulating hormone right it will help in the growth and development of follicle okay so the fsh will help in the growth and development of follicle lh will be also having influence for the development of follicle okay so both of them are released now i will show you one picture see when we said that one of the follicle is getting matured right so the hormones that are influenced are mainly fsh and the lh right see you can see a steady cycle of lh and a surge surge means increase okay a surge of lh and you can see here then it they are decreasing also here the follicle stimulating hormone has a higher grade here because it is helping for the growth and development of the follicle then it will be here slowly decreasing because because we need only one follicle to get matured in each month okay if it has a higher steady grade for follicle stimulating hormone what happens the next follicle will also get matured so we don't want that okay so now we'll go back so in the puberty hypothalamo pituitary ovarian axis get generated gnrh is released gnrh help in the release of fsh and lh in the anterior pituitary which helps in the follicle growth and development then the fsh what it do it helps the granulosa cells around the follicle to produce estrogen okay now here you see 
the estrogen is ha having influence also for what as we tell before if the ovarian event takes place same time uterine event also taking place okay for the uh, preparation of the uterus we need estrogen also so what happens here the fsh will help in the growth of follicle same time it helps in the production of estrogen okay from the granulosa cell see what this estrogen do here estrogen will inhibit luteinizing hormone will inhibit here you by heart if there is higher amount of estrogen it will increase luteinizing hormone if there is low amount of estrogen it will inhibit luteinizing hormone also because luteinizing hormone is the one responsible for ovulation so the estrogen helps see here this estrogen when it get higher the lh is also getting higher get the point when it is less it is helping to decrease the lh because we want the fsh to act more here okay so the granulosa cell will be producing estrogen this will inhibit lh then what else it do this estrogen will give a negative feedback for fsh why in order to stop the function not stop the function in order to decrease the amount of fsh to prevent another follicle to get development during this cycle okay so next the same time estrogen will help to bring proliferatory changes in the uterus as we tell before here proliferatory changes are taking place in the uterine mucosa or uterine lining we need estrogen right next one the estrogen will help a positive feedback to release lh and there will be a lh surge when when means here when the primary oocyte or the primary follicle will get transformed into the secondary follicle or second secondary oocyte and then tertiary and thereby what happened by the end of the 13th day the follicle get matured there is an increase of lh production okay there is a increase of estrogen production and where we are we are in the proliferatory phase of a woman same time which phase here follicular phase okay so the 14th day what happened the matured ovum is released from the follicle get the point so the 14th day which hormone is high lh is high estrogen is high here okay then the here the egg is released so the graphene follicle will be transformed to corpus luteum okay by releasing the egg so what happens here okay we will see back again here you can see the egg is released and the graphene follicle which is the matured follicle will be transformed to corpus luteum this corpus luteum helps in the production of progesterone okay the progesterone is for receiving the fertilized egg and preparing the uterus you can see here the uterus is well prepared to receive the fertilized ovum and that phase in the uterine event is called secretory phase and that phase that ha happens in the ovary is called luteal phase so the luteal phase start from the 15th day to the 28th day or the first day of menstruation here you can see the cycle is repeating here from here okay see so what happens here after releasing of the matured egg the graphene follicle is transformed to corpus luteum and the corpus luteum is taking the function to produce progesterone okay and by the end of the 21 or 23rd day the uterus is identifying we receive the unfertilized ovum okay so what happens here the corpus luteum will be transformed or going involution to corpus albicans and thereby it will be getting degenerated so the production of progesterone will be decreased you get the point the corpus luteum is also producing estrogen that's why we can see here the estrogen cycle or estrogen graph also so both of them will be decreased because the corpus 
albicans will be getting degenerated if the ovum is fertilized here this function will be taken over by the hcg or thereby by bethe placenta okay so i hope you understand from the preparation of the primary follicular development development of follicle from the primary secondary tertiary and by the graphian okay so that phase is called follicular phase same time it happens in the uterus that is called a proliferatory phase on the 14th day there is an increased surge of lh and also fsh here after a decrease level and same time what happens the egg is released and thereby starting of secretory phase in the uterus starting of luteal phase in the ovary and then the egg is released it is traveling through the fallopian tube reaching to the uterus by the time uterus is getting prepared and then corpus luteum is degenerated to corpus albicans okay and it is producing progesterone and estrogen for the fertilized ova but the uh, ovum is not fertilized so it is again going to the menstrual phase by the time corpus luteum is degenerating uh, the hormones progesterone and estrogen decreasing here you can see and here fsh is increasing for preparing for next menstrual cycle okay then here you can see the same thing lh is inducing ovulation and release of egg okay so the luteinizing hormone is responsible for ovulation okay next one corpus luteum is producing progesterone and also estrogen and it helps in the secretory changes in the uterus here okay then after some time progesterone withdrawal takes place because we this uh, uterus will be identifying it receive unfertilized ovum and there is shedding of endometrium see here in this picture also you can see then this picture also same thing follicular phase luteal phase semences proliferatory phase secretory phase in the uterus so important points the menstrual phase takes place from the first day of menstruation to the fifth day and it is around 10 to 18 ml of blood is lost during menstrual cycle and the follicular phase also takes place from the first day of menstruation up to the 13th day and the 14th day is the ovulation the luteal phase takes place from the 15th day of menstruation up to 28th day then again the cycle repeated okay thank you all hope all of you understand still you didn't subscribe my channel please subscribe like comment and also uh, if you want a new topic you can comment in the comment box okay we will see with next class uh, we will be with the uh, placenta uh, umbilical cord and normal pregnancy also we will start in the next coming classes okay thank you